Today we'd like to speak about faith. Now that's a basic word uh, that many people use in all sorts of different contexts. They say you just have to have faith, but we want to talk more about faith. We're going to be using the beginning of the great f chapter of faith in Holy Scripture, Hebrews the 11th chapter, verses 1 to 8. I'm Pastor Richard Krause, Senior Pastor at Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee. We also have satellites out in the town of Aaron, close to Holy Hill, northwest of us, and also to the east of us in Wauwatosa. We begin with the reading of this section of the word, Hebrews 11. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith. Now the writer here starts out this chapter of faith, and he says that uh, by faith we understand that the world was created. A number of weeks ago I was at the Creation Museum down in Cincinnati area, and uh, was reminded how God created the world in six days. You know, if you believe that, like we do here at our church, you have to have faith. Faith in the Word of God. Faith in the way that uh, he describes the creation of the world. By faith, this is how the world was created. Faith, we are told here in this section, is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we don't see. We weren't there at creation, but we take God at his word. He speaks the truth. He was there. Who else was there? By faith, we are told, Abel had a better sacrifice than his brother Cain. Now, Genesis chapter 4, that is a striking story, is it not? Cain murders his brother Abel, and we hear that they both made sacrifices. Abel's sacrifice was accepted by the Lord. God was pleased with his sacrifice because his heart was right with God. But when it came to Cain, he did sacrifices too, but it was just a formality. It was just something he did as a maybe superstitious thing to imply that he is also following God. But God was not pleased. His heart was not right. By faith, we are told here that Enoch was taken away. He did not see death. God was pleased with his faith. God was pleased with the sincerity of his faith. He did not see death. He was taken to the next life, to the presence of God. And now we have the striking section here. By faith, it is impossible to please God. Sometimes people say, you know, that was my grandpa. He never went to church. He never spoke about the Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't really spiritual, but he was a good person. He was always kind to us. He went out of his way to help us in all sorts of different situations. But of course, the text says, hmm, that's by faith we live. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. We can receive great benefit in such a situation, uh, but God is not pleased if there is no faith there. Grandpa did those things for whatever reason, uh, but probably not because he loved the Lord Jesus Christ. By faith, it is impossible to please God, the text says. By faith, Noah built an ark to save his family. Noah was a preacher of righteousness, we are told. Noah, in the middle of a landlocked area, built this huge boat 
and he was the butt of countless jokes. You can't imagine the thing that this guy Noah's building over there. He's building this huge boat out in the middle of nowhere, huh? And people made fun of him. But he was a preacher of righteousness. God had said that if unless this generation repents, they're all going to be destroyed. And they were. Noah believed God, took him at his word. Now, as we want to say something, our faith has to have an object. My father-in-law grew up during the Second World War in the heart of Germany. And he told me that uh, he at times would have to go to the huge train station in Leipzig as a young teen. And when he went there, there was a huge banner that was put up in that train station in Leipzig. And it said, in essence, this, we will be victorious because we believe in victory. Huh? We will be victorious because we believe in victory. Well, my father-in-law is always a very astute man, and already as a young teen, he goes, well, how is this supposed to work? All these people are coming back from the front. Some of them don't have an arm. Some of them don't have a leg. Some of them have uh, terrible problems because of bombing or because of being shot. Many of them are returning in coffins. And then he thought about the situation. Our tanks are being destroyed. Our airplanes are being destroyed one after another. There's no more gas to be found. How can we be victorious? There's no basis for it. Here's a young boy and he's considering that banner, huh? It's got to have an object. If we're going to be victorious, then we have to have men to fight, women to take care of things back in the background, perhaps. We have to have tanks. We have to have gasoline. And if we don't, we're not going to be victorious. Well, our faith has to have an object, and the object is Jesus Christ. We trust God who has sent to us his son, Jesus, who lived for us, died for us, and rose again. May your faith increase as you hear the word of God, as you hear the message of your Savior.